to look up one more time because it seems that that song was really popular when I was a child. It was actually written in the early 1900s and it's part of a hymn called The Heavenly Vision and that's the first line of the chorus. I think it's been adapted somewhat over the years but it's, it's an old hymn that still carries the same meaning no matter what we've been through no matter where we've been, no matter what we've lived, we can turn our eyes on Jesus and receive help from Him. Anyone uh, have any unspoken requests? Just raise your hand. We'll carry those. I see some of those hands going up. And uh, we're going to pray for those needs. We're uh, trusting that God will work in and through each of us to do His work and carry out His work in this community. And I'm so thankful uh, when I hear things that are going on. Just this week, I found a young man that's an entrepreneur in the area, connected with that family, and we've got a, I think, a new tween going with us to Upper Clements Park and connecting the whole family with our church, all because I stopped and had a chat with an entrepreneur who's 11 years old. And uh, what, a, what a joy it was to see some of the bright, brightest and the best in this community. So if you're, ever, if you're ever discouraged about some of the kids you see running around this community, there are some treasures, and every one of them is treasured by God, regardless of how they look and how they act. Uh, but it's so exciting for me to see some of the brilliance that there is here in this community. And we live in a lovely community of wonderful people. Um, so let's remember, as people just go about their way, it was kind of a secondary connection. Um, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but our summer student, Felicity, loves basketball. If you don't know where to find her, if you ask us and we don't know where she is, she's probably out playing basketball. She does that a lot in her evenings. She's connected with a lot of the young people here on the island. And there's just been, I love it, how God creates circles around people so that there's connections all over the place. And that young entrepreneur played basketball, and then I met him and found out that he's a close friend of people here in the church. Isn't that exciting? He and his parents. So let's continue to pray as God builds his church and uh, for all these needs that you've raised your hands about. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you that as we come to you, we can come in the confidence knowing that you are God, that you're the one true God, that your love goes beyond our greatest failures. Your love goes beyond our greatest hurts. And your strength goes beyond our greatest needs. Your power is able to transform not only us, but the situations that we're caught up in. And so, Lord, you see the needs that were represented by these uplifted hands. Meet them, we pray together. We bless you, Father, because you are able to do above and beyond what we could ever ask or think. And so, Father, we give you honor and glory and praise here in this church, here in this place, here on this island, here in this community, and to may your name be known throughout the world, we pray. We pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The reading today will be from the New International Version. Um, let me see. This then is how we should pray. Our Father in heaven, how will be there, how will be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Let me grab my 
stand here. Thank you, Jill, and thank you, worship team, for leading us. I'd like to welcome each one into uh, God's house today, if I haven't already done that. And welcome to our people that are watching online. Um, it never ceases to amaze me when I hear that there are people that have been connected to myself, connected through friends of mine, um, who are reaching out. And uh, it's, it's interesting in this world of connectivity that people around the world can have access to hear sermons. And uh, I met some friends at Beulah that said, if our church is canceled in the winter, we tune into your sermon and still have church during the week. And I said, that's, that's probably an easy thing to do since we hardly ever cancel. And uh, that's people in, in, you know, that northern climate they call New Brunswick. So, uh, and other people said when they're on vacation or, you know, if they're out of town, they can still uh, connect during the week and hear the sermon that is posted up online. So, welcome to everyone here today and uh, let's, let's hear from God as we consider the words of the sample prayer that Jesus gave us, along with, I'd like to talk about types of prayer. Um, and briefly, because I think I've preached a sermon here already about the Lord's Prayer. And if you didn't have an opportunity to hear that, I want to review the pattern that Jesus gave us for prayer. It's not a formula. Yes, we do repeat the Lord's Prayer, that's become a Christian tradition. But Jesus gave it to them as a format, not a formula. A format, a way to pray to God. The things that we need to consider when we pray. And so prayer, or talking to God, should be from our heart, from our mind, and following somewhat the pattern that Jesus gave. Because every great rabbi in Jesus' day wanted to be known for giving a way to pray. And if they come up with the right thing, kind of like in our day, you know, worship leaders come up with a good song. And they're known as a great worship leader. Preachers preach a, a favorite sermon. And they're known as a great preacher. Well, in Jesus' day, a great teacher was known for teaching his followers how to pray. And so Jesus gave his disciples at their request a formula, or a format rather, of how to pray. And that format is to come to God as our Father. I can just imagine some of the great rabbis of the day saying, when you pray to God, kind of in a Laurel Buckingham voice, they would say, when you pray to God, you need to pray to a God that's way beyond this earth. And in the face of that, Jesus said, call him your father. It was new, it was fresh, and it was true because that's what God wants. And I'm sure that Laurel Buckingham would not teach you to pray to a God that's a way distant. I've heard him preach to the contrary, that God is close to us and that God is with us. But the prayer from our heart and from our mind also should include that sense of family, that God is our Father, a good Father. Yes, someone who's close, but Jesus said they weren't totally wrong because as we hold in one hand the idea that God is our Father, we need to sense with reverence and awe how big a God He is. And when you hold those two things, we get a complete picture of a God who's able to provide any need that we have. The needs that you raised your hands about, those things that have touched your heart and life. God is able. He's also close. He's your father. He's a good father who wants the very best for you. 
then we can pray openly to ask him for his kingdom to come, that God's perfect order be restored on this earth. There's a lot of people fighting for a lot of causes, but what we need to pray for is that God's kingdom, God's rule, God's way be established in the earth. And when his kingdom comes, when his will is done on earth as it is in heaven, I can tell you there won't be any people that are pushed out. There won't be any people that are trampled under feet. There won't be any minority that's spit on. There won't be any person that's treated less than another. And we will all have not just a good father, not just a mighty God, but we will have a kingdom that we can live in. And so we need to pray for that. And then in that forum, we can bring our needs openly to God. Because a God who is close and a God who is great and a God who rules a kingdom of majesty is able to meet our needs. We need to ask his help to forgive people who've hurt us or those who are close to us. We need to ask God to forgive us just like we're ready to forgive them. Sometimes that's an easy thing if it's something small, but if we don't forgive, as Jesus explained after he explained the prayer, that if we don't forgive that one who hurt us, then our Father in heaven can't forgive us because we're not ready to receive it. Not that he is enabled, it's that we won't let him because we're more interested in holding our, our right to vengeance then we are willing to give God the right to exert vengeance on our behalf. The God God right to make things right is is giving up our right to control. It's giving up our right to control the world and letting him make everything right. And if we surrender to his will and do that, I can tell you that God one day will make everything right and we'll be on the right side of that. And I definitely, for one, want to be on the side of right in God's kingdom. But I also am trying to impress upon my little heart that it's also the best and the easiest road. Sometimes it seems so much easier to do things our own way with forgiveness. I didn't have that in my notes, but I've had a conversation this week. I said about forgiveness, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to forgive someone after you back over them with your truck. Right? It's pretty easy to forgive someone after you get even. And it's easy to, be, easy to forgive them after you back over them with your truck because it's pretty easy to forgive roadkill. And our world is made up with that attitude. But Jesus said, have the attitude of forgive me like I forgive them. And we need to pray for help with that. And then we pray for God to keep us out of trouble that we don't fall into temptation but that we be delivered from evil. And then end in the knowledge and in the worship of a God to whom is all the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And everyone that's praying with us can say amen to that. But there's different types of prayer. And I wasn't aware, because I'm not a Greek scholar, but I wasn't aware until I did some research the last two or three weeks that there's several different words in the Bible that gets translated into our English uh, translations usually as the word prayer. One of these words, you'll probably remember from the King James Bible, the word beseech. And that word 
is a word in most of the other translations that appears as the word pray or prayer. But the, the rest of the words that appear as the word prayer um, in most translations, I looked up a few, and the, the word prayer appears consistently even though there's several words in the Greek language. So I'd like to share some of the background of those uh, so that you know that there's different prayers that we can pray. Have you ever saw a new person come to Christ and said, I wish they would grow in faith? That I wish is spread across the New Testament and it's always connected with the idea of prayer. So if you see something you'd like God to see God do in the world, remember to connect that with a prayer. We don't wish like people wish to win the lottery. People that wish to win the lottery, um, I, had, I had a person come to me that found out I was a Christian. Um, I was in college, and the person came to me and said, would you pray for me that I could date this guy? It was a girl. And she said, would you pray for me that I could go out on a date with this guy? She said, I believe that God will answer your prayers. And I said, I'll tell you what I will pray. I'll pray that God will lead you and guide you and help you to find someone that will bring honor and glory to him in your relationship. And things like that. You may, you may know that of people that have those I wish prayers. And maybe there's single people here that are lonely, that wishes they had someone to share life with. Well, that I wish prayer can be focused on God for his best. And it should be, as we wish for things in our own world, we should focus our wish prayers on the whole church. God, I wish that you would bless Jill with a good week. Wow. For VBS. And God is already answering that prayer. We're going to have a wonderful week. And anybody that loves theater, well, the Fantastic Three are hitting the stage tonight. <laughs> and we're going to have a blast. And, uh, but I wish that everything would go really well this week so that kids will connect with Christ in a real way. That's a prayer. I wish that people here on the island will see in everyone's life, everyone who's connected with Christ and with this church, that they would see something that will attract them to know a God who gives life to people like that. That's one of my almost daily prayers. That God will see something in your life, in your life, in your life that will draw people to himself. That they will know that there's more to life than what they live day to day. There's a part of that. There's a part of that prayer um, that includes getting together with a friend. And whether that friend is a spouse or someone that will, someone definitely that will keep confidence, that won't share it on Facebook, that won't share it in public or with others, and, uh, but someone that you can share your failings with. The Bible says, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another. And that word in James is the I wish. Pray those I wish prayers. So if, and I know Eddie won't mind me this, but uh, saying this, but if Eddie and I got together and I shared something with him as a leader in this church that just was a mess in my life, not something necessarily that would take me out of ministry, but something that was bothering me, troubling me, and causing me grief, and Eddie would pray over me. I had someone pray right here this week friends that came to visit, came through town unexpected, 
turned our home upside down for a day, and we even kicked Felicity out. Because there wasn't enough beds. She liked the people, too. We just kicked her out to have enough beds. And Tom and Diane took her in, thankfully. And you know what? She dealt with that so graciously, and I'm, I'm thankful. Because we gave them a tour of the church, and we stood right here at the front. And they, four people, gathered around Karen and I and prayed for you. Prayed for this church. Prayed for this area. Prayed for the people who are coming to know Christ. Prayed for the people that are struggling, that need to know Christ and are looking for somebody to save them. And as they prayed, I had a sense that God was at work. And uh, we took them on a tour through the church and they said, wow, what an incredible, incredible facility. Is every seat full? And I said, I wish. And that's my I wish prayer. I'd like to move on. What about the, um, the requests and prayers that we can bring? The requests and prayers. You see, that I w um, the main prayer that happens is the type of prayer that Jesus said, when you pray. Just straightforward pray. Interestingly enough, Matthew, Mark, and Luke use that type of prayer almost exclusively and the book of John goes on and talks about a third type of prayer, which is requests and prayers. Not a request to be rich or be famous or this or that, because those things are temporal. But the requests that we bring to God um, it's kind of like the request we use on the night before our, our kid goes to school, the first day of school. How many have ever had that experience where you try to get the child to bed and the child is so excited and you're so excited and it rubs off in both directions and neither one of you can settle down and you just say, oh, would you please go to bed? You have to go to bed. Tomorrow's such a big day. We need to be rested. And so you're making that request with such a, a wish that it would happen right away. Well, that request for God to work a miracle is almost exclusively used in the book of John. People that came to Jesus, if you look at the miracles, when they came and the way they asked God, it was almost like just a request with such need such openness, saying only you can provide. Only you can decide to do this. And that request is a prayer that comes from the depths of our soul, from the depths of all that we are, expecting a God who is able to meet that need. And it also includes the idea of a friend that stops by out of the blue. And it's lunchtime. And maybe they planned it, knowing that you're a good cook. But it's the idea of, here, have some lunch. That offer. It's like you're offering God a chance to intervene in a situation where he can. So it's both a cry that comes from the depths of your heart and an offer to God who's able to do it. It's just like you're able to hand out some lunch you know that God is able to hand out an answer to your prayer. And that kind of prayer for something that's a real need is just done with such ease, the ease of like saying, sit down at the table, have a cup of coffee, I'll put dinner on, and we'll, I'll put lunch on and we'll have some lunch. And you just come and you say, Father, this is a deep need, but I know that you're able. And I know that you can. So just let me see you at work. Let me feel that you are in control, that you're going to work this situation out. And we can come with confidence to a God like that. We can freely approach the throne of grace 
of a God who's able to intervene like that. There's another type of prayer that goes even deeper than that, and it's where we get to a point where we almost clench our fists because of the angst that we carry inside us. Oh God, if you don't intervene in this kind of situation, nothing can fix it. Nothing can help. I don't know if, there, if you've ever had a prayer like that. Something that continues to be a problem, ongoing, maybe a health problem, maybe a financial problem, and nothing seems to sort it out. Maybe it's just deep down inside, you don't necessarily understand what's happening in your life, what's happening tomorrow, what can ever work out this situation. Someone asked me today, or asked me this week, is there such a thing as super prayer? And my answer is yes and no. There's a yes, because from our heart, we can pour intense focus into prayer. And sometimes we need to. But I thought on the other side, there's almost a contradiction to that, because any prayer is neither intense nor weak in God's sight. He's just a God who's able. So there really isn't a scale on his side. We need to pray in his, you know, may your will be done. In that context, we can pray for anything. In that context, we can ask anything of God. In the context of his word and in the context of his will, we can expect, no matter how big the request seems to us, we can pray. I'm going to share this afternoon if you're not able to be there, I'll give you a brief hint of what I'm going to share because sometimes the scope of our grief gets like that. It seems so big to us. And it, I, it came to mind this week as I was preparing my heart for a funeral that I knew would be taking place shortly unless God intervened. I began to think of a few years ago how we were at Beulah Camp, which is about a half hour outside the city of St. John. There's very few street lights. So when it gets dark at night, it's dark. That's where I grew up. It's kind of neat having a street light outside my house, by the way. But when it gets dark out there, it gets very dark. And I had the privilege of using a very expensive telescope. I was scared to death I was going to do an Urkel and knock it over. It was worth more than my house. And I began to look at the skies because that year, Jupiter and Saturn and some other planets were close by. So I put the viewfinder up and I pulled Saturn into view. And for the first time, I saw something that was not a picture I saw the rings of Saturn. And then I refined it a bit more. I began to see the, the planets, or the, the moons of Saturn. And then I looked at Jupiter, and I could see the, the uh, heavy, heavy storms that happen over that planet. It looks like great big eyes on a potato, great big nodule things. And these are apparently storms over the surface of that planet. And the, I began to see the moon surrounding Jupiter. And I realized that that was millions of miles away. I didn't look it up, but it takes a long time for that light to arrive here on Earth and to go through that telescope and into my eye for me to even perceive it. I began to think how big God is. I began to realize that as big as he is, as as much as there's order and chaos in the universe, that he's in control of all of it, that he is a mighty God. And I begin to realize that when we pray, there doesn't have to be any super prayers. There doesn't have to be any little prayers. 
They're just requests for a God who is both close to us and in control of it all. And my heart was just overwhelmed as I looked, as and I looked, as and I looked. There's also a prayer called a vow. Anyone that's ever been married has prayed a vow. If you've been married in the church, I, Vince, take you, Karen. Some 30 years ago, I realized the depth and meaning of that prayer. Becoming a member of the church. As you join with a church body and you make an agreement to support one another and the church responds back, that's not just a back and forth from people to people. It's a prayer that we honor each other, that we honor God together. And I have a couple people that want to join the church, and we're going to set up, um, I, don't, I don't know if we have to do it on a Saturday, or if we have to uh, set up a Sunday morning, early Sunday morning brunch or something, or what we have to do, but in the next few weeks, I'd like to do some membership training. And if you haven't already given me your name and you'd like to be a part of that, would love to have you uh, join in. And it's no obligation to join the church just because you sit in on the training. Maybe you'll be coming for the, the snack that we have and to hear what it's about. But if you'd like to be a part of this church and you're not a member, this church is for any one who is a believer in Christ, who has repented of their sin, who has been baptized, and who is living a life that's acceptable to God in such a way that they're growing in faith and willing to be a part of a family that we call this local church body. So we're going to do some membership training and uh, we'll be go, going through the uh, process, uh, but it's not a formality. There's another prayer of a vow that we're going to be doing in a few weeks. I had a young lady approach me today. She was carrying a beautiful little baby. And we're going to be doing a baby dedication. And I said, that's one of my favorite traditions in the Wesleyan Church. I don't know of any other church that does what we do. And that is, and I don't know if the Christian Advent Church did it before, if you did, wonderful. If not, I think you will join me in loving this process. Because I know this church, Westhead Church, loves children. And that ceremony has not only the parents saying they will raise the child, a, a vow, but it has the whole church joining in saying we'll do all we can to raise this child in faith and to love the child for Christ. That is more than a tradition. That's a prayer. And that's a vow that we can keep together as a church to see children grow up so that a little girl that's four years old blossoms into a beautiful young woman that goes on a missions trip for a summer and then to Bible college. Picking on you twice today, Felicity. She was four years old when I met her. She was bouncing off the walls. My wife was the uh, kids pastor at River Valley Wesleyan. And I was circulating around the halls just to see who was escaping that day. And I caught Houdini trying to escape. And I think that's the first memory I have of this beautiful young lady. And you know what? She's still bouncing off the walls with energy for Christ. But that takes a church takes a church to raise a, a child. And this village can raise a child in Christ. So those prayers, I'm going to be talking about another type of prayer in the weeks to come, not next week since it's a combined service, uh, but I'm going to be talking about intercessory prayer. And so think about that. Um, it's something that we as a church can do to intervene in lives where God needs to make a difference.
when that person won't pray for themselves, or seemingly not, we can pray on their behalf. When someone may be too sick, or too weak, or too this, or too that, we can pray on their behalf. So I'm going to share on that type of prayer, and uh, I just, I felt a sense, and Karen has been saying for the last year, we've been talking about this, and I want to talk about prayer to the point that we begin praying with the confidence that we need to pray as a church and start seeing miracles happen the way that God wants to bring them into our lives. So the worship team is coming back to share a song. And this song is a reminder of who we pray to. It's not, we're not praying a prayer that's an I wish like the world prays. We're not praying a prayer that's a I hope like the world hopes. We can put our hope our trust, we can offer our prayers up to a God who is more than able to change our world. Can we stand together as we sing this song? And as we sing, if you have something you need to pray for, reach out to God and pray to Him. And we'll be praying with you this week. Bring your needs to Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank You we thank you for your presence here with us. And Lord, as we sing this song, help us to realize just how beautiful, how wonderful, how glorious you are. You're such a glorious God that you gave your one and only Son, sent him into this broken world to make a difference, to make it possible for us to reach out to a God who is so great and so far beyond that we can't approach. And yet you sent your Son into the world to live among us so that we would know that you're near, that you do love us, and that you want us to commune with you. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth as we sing. Well, be sure to greet one another as we go out today. And uh, let's go in God's blessing. Can we pray together in closing? Father, I pray your blessing on each person here today. I pray that you would go with them, that you would show them your love, that you would show them your mercy, that you would light their pathways with your presence and your peace and your help and your strength. Meet every need, I pray, Lord Jesus. And Father, it is all this that we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see most of you at Huskinson's this afternoon. Thanks.